Man, grease me up, woman! Hey folks, this is Grease Gossman. I spent the last week working on expanding what is possible with Boneworks map making. One of the main things missing from current maps is interactivity. This isn't the fault of map makers themselves, they just haven't had the tools. It's one thing to be able to spawn a bunch of enemies and items into a map, but if they don't react as you'd expect, or we're limited to just being able to wake some zombies up when the player gets within a certain range, we're lost. In good map design, solid enemy encounters require that they react based on what the player is doing or has done. Think alarm systems, ambushes, staying out of sight until the player enters a play space designed around combat, altering the terrain dynamically, spawning in more enemies if the player makes a mistake, while rewarding them with an easier time if the player has been creative. All of these things are needed in order for Boneworks maps to be both functional and worthwhile. I'm very happy to say we're well on our way. I've been working with Trev TV and Marinara from the Boneworks Discord modding channels. Trev's initial work on the custom map item spawner has allowed me to dive into bringing that sorely needed interactivity not only into the hands of Boneworks modders, but in a way where I can get those tools into the Unity editor itself. Triggers are one of the main ways that level designers can make the world seem alive. I'm happy to report that not only are triggers working, but they are extremely easy to use within Unity. Here's a quick showcase. The green cubes represent trigger volumes. Triggers can be activated by anything that collides with them or set to player only activation, although that's a little bit finicky at the moment. The first example is a waypoint system. The null body will spawn into the map and hit the first trigger, waypoint zero. That waypoint has a reference to the next waypoint in the path. When the NPC hits the second waypoint, the trigger will direct the NPC to the next node and so on. In this case, the final waypoint in the center of the four cubes simply has a destination back to the first waypoint. So, because these triggers are set to be always active, the null body will continually loop on its path forever. The way the system is designed, triggers look for any NPCs that are children game objects and perform some action, like sending them to another waypoint node, targeting the player, spawning another NPC, and so on, when activated. By nesting the null men in the chain of waypoint nodes, it ensures that they will be associated with the various collision events for each trigger. This NPC is simply set to roam in a 15 meter by 15 meter area. The trigger is set to activate only one time, which the NPC will do on spawn. However, if this trigger was left to be always active, if another NPC was pathing by, say due to following a waypoint chain, if they hit this trigger when it was active, they would change their mental state to roaming. So let's see how this waypoint system can be set up in Unity from scratch. The custom map NPC spawner prefab will become our null body. And now we need their initial trigger, what they should do when they spawn into the map. In this case, they'll trigger this waypoint node and get a destination. So let's create it. In this case, we'll make this another waypoint, but it could easily be any other action available. And now, on the first waypoint, we're going to drag the second waypoint as the first destination. With these basics defined, we can now easily clone our waypoint nodes to speed up the process. And now adjust the names and drag in the appropriate destination objects. We always make sure that we've applied the settings. And if you want the NPC to continually loop rather than simply follow the path once and stop, you'll need to change all of these nodes to always stay active. Other options include making the trigger one time use or setting a maximum number of times the trigger can be activated. Once those max activation times are depleted, the trigger will no longer function. The next key thing to understand is that triggers check their children for any game objects that are NPCs. So we're going to set up a nested chain of game objects so that no matter which waypoint the NPC touches, the triggers will always find the NPC as a child. This also means that as a mapper, you always know what NPCs are associated with a particular trigger or a set of triggers. It's baked into the hierarchy. This NPC will simply be set to roam on spawn. These triggers here are showcasing the ability to modify an object's position, rotation, and scale. It also shows that trigger volumes themselves can be any shape or size. They don't need to be a one meter cube. 
let's finally see this in action. So here's our two null men, dutifully following the waypoint path set for them. In the back is our single null men that we set up from scratch, also following their path. Standing still is an NPC in rest mode, with a default activation range so that he'll wake up without having to get too close. In the back, one null is roaming at will within a 15x15 15 15 area, and the other is also resting, but will switch to auto-target the player when its player-only trigger is activated. Recall that there are some invisible trigger volumes near these walls. The first will drop this barrier in front of me. The second will rotate 90 degrees. Looks like one of our nulls randomly roamed close enough to engage. And finally, this cube will scale up when triggered. Most of the time, however, you probably want to embrace the Boneworks physics engine and simply add forces to rigid bodies. For example, a mechanical door that doesn't lower using gravity, or an object that spins after a torque is applied, like a revolving door or fan. And in this case, while well, it's just an impulse force that slides a cube along the floor. With the right impulse forces applied to the right objects, you could simulate an explosion or other similar action. All of the different Unity rigid body force modes are supported. There's even a gravity toggle. The nulls on the path are in investigate mode, so their activation ranges can be adjusted accordingly. As a Splinter Cell fan, I'm including a stealth section in my map and have found tweaking the investigation range when you need a player to be able to sneak past NPCs patrolling in an area to be very handy. As you can see, this null targeted me from across the map as soon as I hit the trigger on the other side of this barrier. Interestingly, because the barrier can also have a collider, I could have used its movement to trigger this nullman into a target player state, setting up a chain of events. This null has the default resting activation range, but the pathing null on the back has an increased activation range while investigating, and you'll see him become aware of me from pretty far away. Hopefully this little demo has shown how triggers allow mappers to take control of NPC behaviors and bring their designs to life. Now let's set up a simple chain of events scenario. I'm going to use a nullman to spawn in an enemy. Every time he passes a trigger, an omni projector will spawn and instantly start attacking the player. In other words, I'm going to use triggers to encourage the player to prioritize targets. However, this nullman won't spawn in when the map loads. Instead, he'll only spawn when I, the player, hit a trigger. Then, he'll path over to the waypoint chain we've been using throughout this demo and trigger the Omni's spawn. From then on, the Nullman will start pathing through the waypoint chain, and every time he hits a particular node, he'll spawn another Omni. To ensure that things don't get too crazy, I'll make it so that the Omni spawner trigger can only activate once every five seconds, just in case multiple NPCs were to path through the trigger. So, we've just set up several actions that chain together and carry consequences. The player could short circuit the entire thing by killing the null body before they reach the Omni spawn trigger. Or, if distracted with other things going on in the map, the player could quickly become overwhelmed by an onslaught of Omnis, brought to life by a patrolling nullman. There's one catch that I'll fix in a future update. Recall that triggers act only on any objects that are children. In this scenario, that means that the triggers activated by the pathing nullman are going to short-circuit the spawn nullman's path to the Omni spawner. To get around this, I've created a duplicate set of waypoint triggers so that each nullman has its own chain of waypoints, yet the spawn nullman has the additional trigger of being spawned by me when I step on this yellow plate. The plan in the future is to provide some permission settings that allow you to customize what NPCs can activate which triggers and when. Let's see this all in action. First, we have our bog standard pathing nullman. I haven't hit the trigger to spawn in our other null yet. Anytime this null passes over the spawn omni trigger, the map gets a fresh on. Now let's spawn in our nullman that will beeline for the omni spawner and then start following his waypoints, spawning more omnis each time he completes the loop. I need to be careful to stay out of his investigation range, otherwise he'll break from his waypoint path and attack me. I could tweak his investigation range to avoid this behavior. So here, since the Null has aggroed to the Omni, he's going to return home, which is his spawn point. Earlier, when he aggroed to an Omni, 
he hit a waypoint on his way back to home, so he resumed his patrol. You'll see another example of that here. The good news is, any NPC that's returned home can be re-triggered to reset their behavior. Leaving the snowman alive can become a very bad idea very quickly. So let's see what triggers can do for us in a potential combat scenario, like ascending a crane platform that's outside a building. Ignore the crappy looks of the geometry here, the idea is to focus on gameplay. I've already set up the basics of the normal forces that the player encounters on the way up the ramp. However, I want to use triggers to create a set of reinforcements that will attack the player from behind once they're past a certain point. Let's play test. Hopefully this little demo has sparked your imagination. We hope to have these updates to the custom map item spawner and custom map item spawner to Unity released shortly. I can't wait to see what people create with these new tools. Thanks for tuning in.